Hey everyone, welcome to another Chemistry Academy video. In this video we're going to go over the chromatography section of the higher chemistry course. So I'm going to switch to a screen record and talk you through the theory behind chromatography. So in chromatography <coughs> there's a few, a couple of different types of chromatography that we use but mainly all of them are used to identify substances. So if you've got a mixture or a sample that you're wanting to analyse to find out what's in it then you can use any type of chromatography to do that. If you're looking to analyse a sample and determine the concentration of the substances within it, you can use gas chromatography or high-performance liquid chromatography, often abbreviated to GC and HPLC. So first of all, we're going to look at thin layer chromatography, which can also be called TLC. And this type of chromatography can only be used to identify substances that are present in a mixture. So you can't use it to determine how much of something you have. You can only use it to determine what you have. So the way it works is you have this TLC plate that's a thin white chalky plate with something called silica on it, or it could be a piece of filter paper. And you, first of all, draw a line about an Cent two centimeters up from the bottom of the plate in pencil. Now, it has to be in pencil because the pencil won't interact with your samples, whereas ink from a pen would interact. So it must be in pencil. And then you add your samples that you're analyzing onto the plate and you just put them on as wee spots using a little small glass tube called a capillary tube. So once you've set up your plate, you then place it in a beaker with a solvent mix in it. And that solvent mix can be different depending on what you're analysing. Um, but you don't really need to know anything about that. And what will happen is the solvent will start to travel up the plate. And as it travels up the plate, it will carry the substances in your sample with it. Because the different uh, substances within a sample will travel at different speeds then you get the separation happening, which is what allows us to identify what samples are within a mixture. Once the solvent has travelled at least three quarters of the way up the plate, you then take it out and draw a line to where the solvent got to. So you don't let the solvent go all the way to the top. You just let it go at least three quarters, take it out and draw a line to where the solvent got to. If we have a look at interpreting the samples data then, so this would be our developed TLC plate. We have the line that the solvent got to, which is also known as the solvent front. And then we can see that our sample has separated out. So what can be calculated, and if you're asked to, be, to calculate it, you'll be given this formula in the exam. But the RF value is a decimal value it's basically essentially just a decimal fraction of how far the spot traveled with the solvent so to work out the rf value you would do the distance traveled by the spot divided by the distance traveled by the solvent so these spots look like they've traveled about just under halfway up with the solvent so their rf value would maybe be roughly 0 0.45 but you would actually measure with a ruler and work it out accurately so uh, substances with the same RF values are the same substance. So because these two spots match up, they are the same substance. So you can see that sample one and sample two both have whatever this substance is within them. So each spot on the plate is one substance. So if we look at sample one, there's two substances in that mixture and sample two only has one. If it only has one substance, then it's a pure sample or a pure substance. So if you're, you can also use thin layer chromatography to test for purity of things. And if you run a TLC plate and the sample only has one spot come out of it, then you can conclude it's a pure substance. So key things to remember that each individual spot is one substance. And if a sample only has one spot in its TLC, then it's a pure sample. So the different substances will travel at different speeds, like I mentioned before, and the different speeds or distances they travel are dependent on two things. The first thing is the size. 
So smaller particles tend to travel further. That's just because they're lighter. So they're easier for the solvent to carry. And secondly, they're separated based on polarity. So separation due to polarity is really dependent on what your solvent mix was. So if your solvent mixture was polar, then the polar molecules will travel further because as your polar solvent is traveling up the plate, it's going to carry those polar molecules with it because like dissolves like, so the polar solvent is going to interact with the polar molecules. That then means that the non-polar molecules wouldn't move as far, so they'd be further down the plate. If we then look at the other type of chromatography that we get, which is gas chromatography or liquid chromatography, also sometimes called high performance liquid chromatography. This um, works in a big machine. Um, so you have within the gas chromatography or liquid chromatography machine, we've got this thing called a column. So it's essentially a tube, but we call it a column. And the column is lined with what's known as a stationary phase. So it's got a coating inside of it. And that coating will cause molecules to travel through the column at different speeds. Okay, so again, we get separation. In gas chromatography, just like TLC, substances are separated based on their size. So again, the smaller molecules will travel through faster. So in this case, they would have what we call a lower retention time. So we don't have RF values in this type of chromatography. We have retention time. So the retention time is essentially just how long it took the substance to get out of the column. So if the smaller molecules are traveling faster, they'll take less time to get through the column and reach the detector. The other thing they get separated on again is some polarity. So like I said, that coating in the column, the stationary phase, if the coating is polar, the polar molecules in your mixture are gonna take longer to travel through because they're gonna be held back by the polar coating on the column because they will be interacting with each other. So in that case, if you've got a polar column, the polar molecules are gonna take longer to travel through so their retention time will be higher. I quite often think of it like if a celebrity was traveling down a red carpet, if it was a celebrity that all the fans at either side really liked, they'd be getting asked to stop for photographs, autographs, and it would take them much longer to get down the red carpet if the celebrities are liked. Whereas if they're celebrities that people aren't really interested in, then they get down the red carpet quite quickly. So it's the same with the molecules. If your column is polar, the polar molecules, because like dissolves like, are going to be held in the column faster, whereas the non-polar molecules would travel through much quicker. If you had a non-polar coating on your column, then the opposite would happen. The non-polar molecules would be held back and take longer to get through, whereas the polar molecules that aren't going to interact with the non-polar coating would travel through much quicker. <clears throat> the, when the substances are being carried through the column, they're carried by a gas in gas chromatography or a liquid in liquid chromatography. And the important thing to note about these liquids and gases is that they must be inert. So they cannot interact with your sample, a bit like why we use the pencil in the TLC. So the inert liquids or gases, depending on what type of chromatography it is, carry the substance through and then they reach the detector, separated out, and all these individual peaks are created for each individual substance. So just like one spot on the TLC plate was one substance, one peak on the chromatogram is one substance. So from this chromatogram, we can see there's four substances in our sample because there's four peaks. Now, if one of your peaks has the top chopped off the top of it, then that means it's too high a concentration and you need to dilute your sample. Because the other thing that's really good about these two types of chromatography is that we can use them to work out the concentration of things in a sample as well. So the higher the peak, the higher the concentration, okay? And the excellent thing about the area of the peaks or the height of the peaks is that they're directly proportional to concentration. So if we know that a peak area of 68,000 
is a concentration of 50 grams per litre. Then if we run an, another sample and get a peak area of 34,000, that's half the peak area. So that means the concentration would be half. So it is directly proportional, the peak area versus the concentration. So we can use <clears throat> peak area to work out the concentrations of unknown samples. Okay, so that's essentially everything you really need to know on the theory of all the types of chromatography you'll come across. So thin layer chromatography, you can only use to identify the substances. Gas chromatography and liquid chromatography, you can use to identify substances and determine the concentration of them as well. So hope that helped. Uh, if you find it useful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe.